Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here from A Meeple Family, and today I am very excited to walk you through a new game that's coming to Kickstarter called Race for the Title. Race for the Title can play up to four players and even offers a solo mode. In this game, you will take on the role of a manager and you will be managing your own football team, or in the States as we call it, soccer. The designer of this game is actually a father of three who is very passionate about football as well as board games, and particularly deck building. And that's a lot of what you're gonna see in this game. So let's head down to the table and when I'm all done I'll give you my thoughts at the end of the video. Well thank you guys for joining me at the table. So I have planned on showing us a two-player game just to give you an idea of how gameplay works but let's talk about gameplay setup. Now just so you are aware there are four teams in the game. I've went ahead and select the racing manager and the united manager so I'm gonna set these ones back in the box. Let's first look at how each player is going to set up their starting deck. So to get started each player is going to select the league that they would like like to manage and of course get their corresponding manager badge as I have done here. Now in order to set up our starting hand, each player will need four of these program sales cards as well as six youth players. And you're going to want to make sure that you have two of each. Now the red numbers here signify our defense score and the green numbers are our attack score. So as you can see, I have two players that both have one defense and one attack a zero defense with one attack, and one defense with zero attack. With your four program cards and six youth players, this is going to start you off with your 10 card deck. Go ahead and shuffle it and place it face down by your unit manager badge. In addition, each player is going to have their own player die, as well as score tracking cubes. Throughout the game, players will use the score tracker to keep track of points earned. Now let's talk about setting up this big section of cards here that's called the marketplace. The marketplace is divided into three sections. When setting up the game, in order to set up our marketplace, we're going to have to sort all cards into three categories. And these categories are going to be based on the cost of each card. The cost of each card can be found in this gold circle on the corner of all market cards. This first row here is only cards valued at 1 to 4. The second row is only cards valued at 5 to 7. Cards valued 8 and higher will make up our third and most expensive row of the marketplace. Once you shuffle the marketplace piles, go ahead and lay five cards face up in each row. To decide who goes first, each manager will need to roll their die. The highest dice starts the game. Once we've determined first player, we also need to put out our starting lineup. Our draw pile in this game is referred to as the bench. In order to create our starting lineup, go ahead and turn over five cards from your bench. Now on our turn, we're gonna be looking at our player lineup. One of the main things we can do on our turn is play a match. Because there's only two players in this game, if I play a match, it will obviously be against the racing manager team. But in a higher player count, you would choose who you wanted to play against. Now if I choose to play a match and I've decided against my opponent, I need to add up my total attack ability. These are indicated by the green numbers on any of my player cards. So for my scenario, I have an attack of three. I then need to see what my opponent's defense is. They have a defense of two. Once our base values have been determined, it's time to roll the die. With my base value of three plus two, I have a total of five attack. And my opponent with a defense base of two and their die of three, they are defending for five. In a situation like this, where both teams tie or it's considered a draw, both teams just get one point. Now, if I had rolled a higher number and been able to defeat my team, I would score three points. And the same would be true for my opponent. If they had rolled a higher number and were able to defend and beat me, then they would score three points. Now, if at any time during gameplay, your lineup includes a player that matches your club, that player gets a plus one attribute bonus. This plus one bonus is applicable to both defense and attack scenarios. So for this example, instead of 
Chapman being only worth 5 defense, he would be worth 6. Now you can still buy players who do not match your club, they just don't get that attribute bonus. After every match, the home team gets one income from gate receipts, and this income can be used to buy cards in the marketplace. Now throughout the game, you may be able to acquire stadiums from the market, and these stadiums will allow you to get higher money for every match you host. Now let's take a look at what it might look like to buy something from the market. These program sales here give me one money, and if I count the one stadium credit I get with the beginning of the game for hosting a match, that gives me a total of three money to spend. So looking at the cost of these cards, it looks like I can get this player here. When you acquire new cards from the market, they're going to start off in what is referred to as the changing room or discard pile. When you finish making your purchase, be sure to refill the marketplace. Now, if you have enough money, you're able to buy more than one card, but your money does not accumulate from round to round, so you either spend it or lose it. After you've had a match and spent any money, it's time to send all of your cards to the changing room. And then refill your lineup. Now, play would continue to the opponent. Now that we have a general understanding of how the game plays, let's take a look at a couple different cards you can equip your bench with. There's several different ways to earn income throughout the game. There's several stadium cards that you can acquire from the marketplace. Now, when you acquire a stadium card, it still has to go into your changing room and be filtered back in through your bench. But once it comes up into your starting lineup, you can activate it and permanently leave it face up in your display. In addition to stadiums, there's also formation cards that you can add to your display in the same way. You'll have to first discard them and filter them in through your starting lineup. But once they appear in your starting lineup, you can permanently put them in your display. These formation cards permanently improve your defense and or attack. You'll also be able to acquire cards like this. This card allows you to scrap any card from your lineup or changing room. Or if you'd rather, you can just take the money instead. You may also see cards like this. You can use these cards on your turn to weaken an opponent's team. For instance, in order to play this injury card, I can select a player to place it on. And this means that this player misses their next match. Now let's take a look at the score track because I want to talk to you about incident cards. These incident cards come into play when the very first player and only the first player hits the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 mark on the score track. As soon as they hit one of these spaces, they're gonna need to draw an incident card. Some of these incident cards may be devastating, while others may be unique, giving you a reward. Now looking at our score track, there's always gonna be a league leader. And if you play a match against the league leader, you get plus one in gate receipt. And higher gate receipts means more money, so you can purchase better cards at the market. All right, well, I've tried to squeeze everything into the frame here and I want to give you an idea of how this game plays. Now everything you see here is a prototype but this is gonna at least give you an idea of what gameplay looks like in Race for the Title. So let's go ahead and roll both managers dice to see who goes first. Okay it looks like it was two to one so the United Manager League team is gonna go first. Well I think to get started let's see I have an attack of one two three which are the green numbers and my opponent has a defense defense of two. So I am definitely going to host a match. So we will do that by rolling. Oh my goodness. So I have one, two, three, four against five, six, seven. So red has actually won. So they're going to get three points for winning. Now I do have the option to purchase something from the market, but I really don't have any money. I only have one money from hosting a game. Each player starts out with a stadium that gives them one. So I'm not going to do that. And I am going to go ahead and clear my players and they are going to go face up into the changing room and I am going to get my new lineup out. Now it's going to be the Racing League's turn. Well, I am not looking very strong, so they are definitely going to take advantage of that and host a match. 
All right, they smoked me. So they have one, two, three against my one. <laughs> so they are gonna get another three points. Now they actually have a program sales, which is going to give them one money and they hosted a match. So that is two altogether. Well, looking at this bottom row here, I think they're gonna go ahead and get a cash reserves. And this is going to go into their discard pile along with their starting lineup and then they will put out their next five cards face up, creating their new lineup. Well, looking at my lineup, it is pretty weak, but you know what? So is my opponents, and I could really use that one extra income, let me refill the market there, from the stadium for hosting a game, so I am gonna go ahead and have a match here. Okay, I got six, seven, and they have one, two, five, six, seven. They also have seven, so we have tied. So we each get one, which is better than none. So I'm still going to get that one income from my stadium for hosting the game, and that is gonna give me a total of five to spend. I think I'm actually gonna go with these two cards here for a total of five. So this one here, he actually matches my club. So that's gonna initiate that matching club bonus, allowing me to get a plus one attribute to both defense and the attack. So this will actually be worth four and two. So that's a pretty good deal. That's gonna go in my discard pile as well as the cash reserves, which is gonna get me two money when this comes up into my lineup. So I'll go ahead and shuffle my changing room here and get my bench back together and we'll get five more players and we will set up our lineup. Okay, and I'll refill this market here as well. Well, let's go over here and see what's going on with the racing club. Now, as always on your turn, you have the option to host a match or not. So if they choose, they can sit this one out, but they've been rolling really good. And I think they're gonna go ahead and host a match. Now I have a defense of, let's see, four, and they have an attack of two. I will win this one. That is great. One, two, three. So I ended up with a total of one, two, three, four, five defense, and they ended up with three attacks. So yes, I definitely took that one. Now, since they hosted a game, they are gonna get the one extra income for a total of four. They have decided to do the club shop profits, which is gonna get them three money when that comes up into their lineup. Well, then they are gonna shuffle their changing room here and go ahead and refill their bench and their lineup of five new cards. Now play would continue to the United Club. Now we haven't quite gotten there yet, but I do want to remind you that when a player reaches these black spaces, on the score tracker, that is gonna initiate those incident cards. And it's only the first player that gets to those spaces where those will come out. But other than that, I hope this gives you a good idea of how the gameplay works in Race for the Title. Well, thank you so much for joining me down at the table as I gave you an idea of how Race for the Title plays. If you've always dreamed of managing your own sports team, this may be the game for you. And if you love deck building, you're really gonna love this game. I've had the chance to play this not only as a solo player, but also at varying player counts, and I will say the higher player counts are really fun. I can tell that a lot of love and thought went into this game, and one of my favorite features at a higher player count is actually that league leader bonus. So this kind of has a little bit of ganging up feel on it because if you are the leader in the league, people want to play matches against you because they're gonna earn that additional gate receipt income, which is so valuable so that you can increase your income and of course get those desirable cards and players that you need to better your game. We've had a really fun time playing this around the table as a family, but I've also really enjoyed playing this with my son who's 12. He absolutely loves this game and teaching this game to him and playing together was actually a breeze. And I feel like the game mechanics make sense. The cards, the iconography, the descriptions on the cards are really easy to pick up, jump in and get started. Now there is quite a bit of randomness and luck in this game because you are adding in the element of dice and of course cards. With all deck building games, part of the strategy is not only gaining cards but also removing cards from your deck and the designer of the game has offered a lot of opportunities for you to call or get rid of cards from your deck now I actually found the dice rolling in this game quite thematic and the reason is is because you can have the best team the best offense the best defense but sometimes when game day comes you all of a sudden it just slips through your fingers and you lose the game and I feel like that's where the dice component really comes in it can seem like you're gonna win and you know what 
what, your opponent can pull out a win right from underneath your nose. And that's really what I did love and enjoy about the dice element in this game. Now, I can't say I'm a huge sport enthusiast. Of course, my husband and my children absolutely love sports, but this is not one that I feel like you need to know a ton about the sport in order to play. Of course, if you love the sport, it's only going to add that much more to your enjoyment. But for someone like me who is maybe just kind of a sideliner, I kind of sit on the sideline of sports games and um, I'm just kind of there because I need to be there. I still had a great time playing this game and I don't feel like that hindered my enjoyment in the game at all. In fact, I really enjoyed myself when I was playing this game, not only with my family, but also solo. Well, as always, I hope this video was helpful and able to shed some light on this new game, Race for the Title, that is coming to Kickstarter. I have put links in the description below so you can check out more from the designer and a link to their Kickstarter page. As always, thank you guys so much for taking time to watch and I'll see you later. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes